welcome to the Margot Show. Margot is off tonight, so I'm stepping in for her. My name is Tara, and we have a very special guest for you guys tonight. By trait, he is an award-winning New York artist, curator, and founder of Art Cosmos and Russian Pavilion. Artham's work has been exhibited in countless of museums, galleries, it's even been in novels, Broadway shows, and he's won several awards. So Artham, I've been looking through your website and there is no way I can list all of your achievements or even choose my favorites. So can you tell me about some projects or awards that you are very passionate about? Um, projects that I'm very passionate about? Well, my favorite projects are the ones that are still to come. <laughs> uh, and I think one of those projects that I've been working on for many years as well um, is something that uh, that's going to materialize in uh, May of uh, uh, 2018 oh. uh, during Freeze Art Fair and it's going to be a, a group exhibition that I'll be curating um, in Long Island City and it's titled H2O Myth and Reality. Uh, but the, the passion and the idea for this uh, project started many years ago um, when I started my own series called Sunken Cities mm. uh, which is uh, which is actually could be found on my website, <laughs> as you probably saw, um, and it was inspired by um, inspired by my uh, life and study in Amsterdam. Mm. Um, so you took a year abroad to go to Amsterdam while you were in art school. Yeah, while I was in art school in New York in School of Visual Arts, I uh, was granted a uh, uh, a study abroad in Amsterdam, which I took advantage of, and it was mm -hmm. great uh, studying experience and great experience. Um, great experience of different culture. So what sunk? <laughs> what inspired <laughs> this city underwater? Well, um, as you probably know, that Amsterdam is the city of... Ch By the way, New York is New Amsterdam. So I came oh. from New Amsterdam to Old Amsterdam. <laughs> Congrats. Um, yeah. Um, and um, there's a lot of water channels in Amsterdam. And I, I lived in a house right next to the water channel. Mm. And there was a guy who lived in the barge on the right on the channel and he had a, his boat house and every morning that i would go to university i would wave him hello and he would wave hello with his cup of coffee usually and then one day when i came from the university his uh boat sunk oh so my half, god so half of the boat was uh, uh underwater know, underwater yeah and there was a um a coffee mug just floating through his uh half uh, sunken cabin and right away kind of had this uh like illumination, this idea that this his boat uh, is kind of um, a metaphor for our society and um, and for our civilization. And as, as soon as I got upstairs to my house, I started drawing this uh, kind of boat uh, mothership, kind of cradle of our civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I moved to New York, uh, I started working on Sunken City, which is the city uh, submerged or half submerged under the water which is maybe the result of um, um, global warming or sub, some post-apocalyptic uh, uh, scenario. And uh, well, now years later, it's uh, developing into a real big exhibit uh, with a lot of international artists and, and scientists oh. who are invited to this exhibit. Um, it's gonna be part of the, this ongoing project that you mentioned, Art Cosmos, oh, which is, which is a merge of scientists and uh, artists. Basically, uh, what we try to do, we try to uh, put them on the same platform uh, to see and cross-pollinate the ideas to see if any new solutions uh, could be found for old problems. That's awesome. And in that, I know that your art and your creation of these civilizations have been described as prophetic. And I even have Dwayne Lucia, the director of Gallery East here, saying that he thinks it's visionary that you can combine elements of, you know, different cultures and past cities to imagine these possible futures. So where does this unique vision and style come from? Uh, well, I've been always fascinated by science fiction mm -hmm. and science and science fiction and history in general. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of it comes from my uh, fascination with science fiction. Speaking of awards, answering your uh, earlier question, one of the awards I received about 10 years ago was uh, Illustrator of the Future Award oh, wow. uh, given to me by um, uh, Writers and Illustrators Society in uh, Los Angeles, California. They actually flew me out there and it was a very interesting and mind 
broadening event, you know, they took us to NASA and actually saw the robots that are now roving Mars. Wow. So, <laughs> so that was quite cool, yeah. That's really cool. So what events have you been involved in? Oh, it's 2018, so in 2017, what have you, what are you most excited about having worked on? I know you did a lot of cross um, discipline work. Yeah, uh, well, uh, towards the end of the 2017, I was involved in this very, actually I did a few uh, fundraisers in 2017. One of the most exciting and lavish, fabulous ones was uh, called, uh, um, it was it was made by uh, Naked Heart Foundation, and I believe the name of it was, uh, uh, it was Halloween. Uh, oh, fabulous fa fun fair. Fa 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 fabulous fun fair for <laughs> yeah. Halloween, yeah. And, um, uh, it was, I, I think you heard about it, yeah. Yeah, it I remember reading a headline thing saying it's the most like modeled, filled, celebrity, like heavy collection of like Halloween party yeah, in the I mean, city. Like the art director was Jeff Koons. Uh, wow. Uh, and, right. Uh, and I, uh, I also got to, to to contribute as an artist mm -hmm. and it was great to be working with such an individuals mm -hmm. and to be among such a uh such a fabulous new york crowd and but the most important thing is that we raised a lot of money that day for sure uh, out of nothing for a good cause you know so instead mm -hmm. of just partying new yorkers went to party and raised money for the good cause and nas performed right i think was it this year Nas, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. performed and actually uh, i was i was doing my performance which was an artist performance as well and then i heard him perform and i'm like oh that sounds just like nas and then <laughs> i thought that's pro that probably is nas <laughs> and there you go there i go yeah right that's a very huge party i know it's like such that a, was a big party a yeah. very ha a highlight. but it was also a good artistic event yeah mm -hmm. uh another good events in 2017 um well we had a um i was participating in another group show uh dedicated to 100 year anniversary of russian revolution mm -hmm. it was a big event that took place uh in the embassy and the Bulgarian Embassy in New York, uh, in another big gallery in Long Island City, Black Cell Gallery, uh, and also to take place in Washington, D.C. at the Russian Embassy. I see you are involved in a lot of Long Island City scene, like in the 2017. Is yes. that, are you? Uh, I just moved, I well, I just moved my studio to Long Island City. Oh, congrats. Thank you, yes, it's a- uh, Great area. I'm like in between the PS1 and Museum of Moving Image, though much closer, <laughs> to, the, much closer to the Museum of Moving Image. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very vibrant uh, community, but it's also kind of still, uh, um, like it has a neighborhood feel. You know, mm -hmm. I've, been in I, I've been in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, since 96, and I still live there. Um, and it really changed for the better as a neighborhood, mm -hmm. but it also became like overcrowded and it's mm -hmm. difficult to work there as an artist because I just need kind of calmer environment around me, mm -hmm. you know. So and how Long long Island is perfect for that, you know, I have a big space there right. and I'm next to a lot of other working artists. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm deaf. So and everybody's welcome to my studio. My studio has an um, uh, open house at least once every two months. Mm -hmm. And you can find information on my website, artsamart.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also all my upcoming shows are on my website as well. So I heard about that this website is newly launched. So you are you yeah. gonna have like a launch? Um, I might I'm, I might have a launch uh, for my website early in early spring probably, or maybe end of February. Yeah. And I'll definitely have an event for that that will be featured on the website. Ah. And also, speaking of upcoming events, I also have an upcoming solo show in uh, in Tribeca, New York. I'm actually about to sign the contract this week. Uh, and also, in the, all the information will be on my website. But it should be sometime uh, late March or early April. How long have you been in New York? I've been in New York since 95. Oh, wow. I and you never thought of moving anywhere? Have you done residencies in different... Yes, I've done, I've done a lot of residencies around the world. Uh, I've done one in Russia, in France, in uh, Rome, Italy. Wow! In uh, I've done I've done it twice in Barcelona. I actually became an ambassador for a residency in Barcelona called Espronceda, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend to all the artists who are interested in going to Barcelona. Um, what was so great about it? Uh, the great thing about that residency is that uh, well, first of all, it's a great space. Mm -hmm. 
you have a uh, you have very good living condition and working conditions you're 10 minutes from the beach and 10 minutes from the center wow at the end of your residency you get to exhibit the work that you created and also what i liked about it the most is that uh, 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 Henrik and Holger uh, Spiegel, the owners of the residency, they kind of, uh, they uh, very much, um, um, they like for their artists to work together. They even push you towards working together, which is not common for a lot of artists because like most of the artists are kind of like, um, I don't know, like uh, monks, you know, just sitting <laughs> in your cave and just painting your works, you know, in your, uh, and then you're coming out. And we will be back right after this break, and we'll find out more about what you think. Are those 11 minutes already? Welcome back. Welcome back, Artham. So beyond residencies, beyond, you know, the professional art career traveling, you probably travel all the time. I do travel all the time. I love to travel. Mm -hmm. And I think it's partially why I do the art residencies, because it, I combine work and vacation. I call it, I call it workation. <laughs> <laughs> but even when I'm not uh, going to residencies, it's still a workation for me, because mm -hmm. whenever I go, I take my sketchbook with me and I and I paint, I take photographs, I take notes, compose poems, you know, but mostly I take, I make sketches. Has there been a city or a country that inspired a collection or a specific piece of work? Absolutely. I think every, um, well, a lot of the cities that I go to, they are kind of combined into the mythical city series that I have. Uh, but also there are definitely places that I'm inspired to and I come back to, like Barcelona. Uh, but other places, like I traveled through Nepal and Tibet, mm. uh, and it was definitely uh, an eye-opening experience. And um, it was something, I mean, I traveled throughout Europe, uh, and it's brilliant and beautiful. But going to Asia, especially to countries like Tibet and Nepal, you just see totally different uh, approach to life. Mm -hmm. you know, people are much poorer, but much happier there, mm -hmm. at least in Nepal, where they're not oppressed as mm -hmm. they are in Tibet. Uh, and other or like South America, Peru was amazing. And actually, I was fortunate enough to travel in Peru with a scientist, uh, Greg Braden. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a two week kind of travel and lecture. And I really learned a lot, you know, and yeah, so. So traveling is definitely on top of my to do list. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from my understanding, being a New York artist is very difficult. You're always competing. Right, so for you, like, why did you decide that you wanted to be an artist in New York City? Well, I think I first decided that I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And um, and actually, that decision was, it's a long and different story, it's a separate story, but once I decided to become an artist, 
uh, there was only a few choices. Once I decided to take my talent seriously, there was only a few choices for me, as was pointed out by my first mentor, uh, Miss Bonnie Layton, uh, when I was still living in Buffalo. Uh, and those few choices were either Los Angeles or New York. And New York was just much closer um, on so many different levels, you know. Uh, I, you know, uh, pe people say that you're either New Yorker, like you're either like New York or Los Angeles, so I'm definitely mm -hmm. the type of person to like New York. Yeah, I'm definitely a New Yorker. And I came here in 95 and it was love at first sight. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was also very lucky to get, to, to get into the School of Visual Arts, to get a scholarship there. Um, but, but it's also love and hate relationship, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but there's definitely more love than hate in it. And I think what helps me stay in New York is the fact that I travel so much. Mm. <laughs> it's like a circle. <laughs> it's like a circle, yes. Yeah. So I always, I'm always happy to come back to New York, but I'm always happy to get out of New York and travel as well. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually going to Thailand oh. uh, four days from now. That's where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I'm going to be We'll talk after. Okay, yeah, I, need some, <laughs> I need some tips. Absolutely. Now, I am going to meet a, uh, a local artist who's a friend of mine whom I spent time with in art residency together. So we shared a workspace and then we had a show together. And we actually even traveled to Venice together for uh, Venice uh, Biennale, which is, by the way, one of my favorite art shows in the world. Uh, and now I'm gonna go see him in Thailand and I'm also gonna travel around and meet a very dear uh, collector of mine as well. That's wonderful. So now that New York is you know, so there's so much opportunity for someone to be an artist now. You paint a photo, you put it on eBay, and so what do you think someone who's been living and working here for 20-something years is a difference between a living, working artist and someone who just does art? I don't know, what is there a difference? I, I guess... Um, what makes you, like, what, why do you think you're an artist? Um, I think I wanna, well, I... Well, first of all, I don't do anything else by art. I make my living as an artist and I paint every day. And as a matter of fact, this is, a, this is kind of my daily routine. It's not, I'm not painting because I'm forced to or because it brings me money. <laughs> it's part of my, it's part of my, just, you know, I paint as I breathe, sort of, you know. Wow, and it's a necessity. It's a necessity, yeah, and it also gives me a lot of joy. Sometimes it brings me a lot of pain, <laughs> you know. It's, it's kind of like, um, um, I guess it's like uh, it, I'm, I'm in love with art, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. it's just like any love relationship, you know. It's a, uh, but uh, in, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite art part about doing it? Like, there must be something that stands out to you. Uh, well, my favorite part, because as a working artist, I'm kind of forcing myself to work, if not daily, then almost daily. But it doesn't mean that I have a daily inspiration. It's just sometimes it's just uh, routine labor. Mm. Uh, but my favorite part, of course, when I'm inspired and that uh, initial sp spark comes in from somewhere and I'm able to channel it and put it on paper because that process of creation, that initial process of, process of creation for me brings me closest to God. Mm. I feel almost like a creator myself Yeah. while I'm creating my own worlds. And in a way you are when in like a... 2 3D scale you're literally Absolutely your own yeah worlds. you take something that's in your mind and you put it onto two or three dimensional scale depending on material and uh, yeah so this is as close as I can come to God Wow and this is why it's my favorite activity <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome um, what advice would you give to aspiring artists New York New York or, or not anywhere New York. else in the world I think just believe in yourself and continue doing what makes you happy mm -hmm. Uh, just if you if your art makes you happy, then you're on the right track. And also, uh, don't stop. You know, continue. Try to outgrow yourself. Don't be too comfortable with your happy self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, be, and most importantly, trust in yourself and believe in yourself. Don't listen to anybody. Just <laughs> your heart. <laughs> That's awesome. So, when you face doubt or anything like in yourself in your career, how did you find? that you overcame it without someone telling you this? Um, well, sometimes it takes some time. Um, usually, um, uh, I mean, everybody has ups and downs and so do I. It, it's definitely helpful to have 
people who love, trust and believe in you next to you because, mm-hmm. you know, at the moment of weakness and doubt, you know, it's, it's great to have family, friends and loved ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I mean, but also if you do what you love, you can look at the works that you created and that alone can mm-hmm. eradicate the doubt, you know, because when I'm down, but I like and I look at something that I created and I'm like, OK, you know, I, I didn't waste my life or my year. Yeah. or my week and nothing you know here's the result of my uh of my labor yeah know. so i have to point this out i love what you're wearing right now <laughs> oh, thank you is, is this like what you usually wear or did you wear it for something special is this there like well i knew that i was coming to see you on television today so of <laughs> course i dressed up a little mm-hmm. above average uh, but this is a, this is a garment that i made in collaboration with my uh, friend uh, new york based uh, uh, fashion designer Alan Perchonek, oh. and actually I'm, we made it for uh, Burning Man. Um, ah. I don't know if you know about this art and music festival that takes place uh, every year in Nevada desert. Mm-hmm. It's uh, if you guys haven't heard about it, I highly recommend it to all the artists and just to all the free spirits out there. Uh, I know there's a lot of art installations within Burning Man. A lot of people like I feel like associate Burning Man with just a party, but. There's a huge like artistic and spiritual element Absolutely, to it, right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I went there a few times, and uh, I, I had, I, I had my own reservations about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I also thought it was just a big rave, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's not. It's actually one of the best uh, events and one of the best places that I've been to travel in the earth. Wow. Yeah, it's, I, I definitely highly recommend it. It's one of a kind event, one of a kind place. And we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. Um, so, when did you decide you wanted to be an artist? Well, I was a uh, I was a drawer all my life. I used to draw since I was a kid, since I remembered myself, and I always loved it and immersed myself in it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, I grew up in Soviet Union, um, and uh, and I didn't take any art classes or I wasn't enrolled in any art schools while I was growing up. Uh, just a regular Soviet Union kid. Um, but uh, about uh, when I w- when I was about sixteen or seventeen, my family uh, well, my parents announced they were moving to the states, which was a big deal. Um, and I started thinking about my future. I was graduating from high school. The world, my world, was in chaos because the Soviet Union collapsed. Uh, mm. The uh, curtain came down. The curtain came down. The country was in ruins. Okay, and it was, it was chaos. A total chaos. It was an economic breakdown. I mean, everything that people strive for for the last, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years, I mean, everything came upside down, including uh, all the, like, the belief system, you know, I mean, just like in any other normal country, like, 
kids like me being in high school were thinking about going to well prior we're thinking about going to college you know while we didn't know what to think mm -hmm. you know but in any case i wasn't thinking of becoming an artist and then i had a near-death experience i was actually stabbed um and almost in a died. fight yeah i was stabbed in the fight in my liver and actually almost bled to death wow <laughs> and as i was taken away in the ambulance um i was pleading to the doctor to give me something for the pain because i was in so much pain and the doctor just looked at me and he said young man judging by your wound you're either not going to make it or you're going to be crippled uh, for the rest of your life and and at that moment i saw like the light at the end of the tunnel and that was actually the first time that I really got scared in my life. Uh, and I, I thought to myself, God, like, I'm not ready to die yet. And I know you gave me at that point, I realized that the only kind of talent <laughs> that I have was my art talent. And I gave myself and the higher power kind of war, my word that uh, that I will take my talent seriously and I will do everything to blow that spark into full flame. Um, that's awesome that you think like this gift from God you feel closer to God when you do it too and like it's it's interesting that you discovered it in that moment yeah and I think actually uh, it was a very uh, shocking and dramatic experience but now looking back at it I think it was one of the best experiences that I had in my life because it saved me years of soul searching right and uh, because you know at that moment when I was about to lose my life I knew what was most important in my life and what was the gift that was given to me that I can relate to the rest of the humanity. Wow. And, um, and here you are. Well, I mean, this isn't probably in retrospect, but I'm glad you got stabbed because you would not <laughs> be here today if probably you didn't not. almost die. Probably not, yeah. Or, um, yeah, I would have probably became, uh, I don't know, bank manager. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, that is all the time we have for tonight. Well, Bef thank you. It was a pleasure and honor being here. Before we end, do you have a life motto you could leave us with? Um, like I said, just trust in yourself and trust in God. Don't forget to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good night, guys.